This is November 1994, and we are going close to next spring when it will be 50 years after the liberation of the concentration camps in Europe during the Second World War, at the end of the Second World War. And we have with us one of the liberators of Dachau concentration camp, Mr. Fred Long. Mr. Long, tell us about when you went into the Army, where you were born, and where you went into the service in the year, and then how you got to that place at that time. Well, I went into service in uh, 1942, and I went in the local board 58, Harlan, Kentucky. And I left there and went to Fort Thomas, Kentucky. And I was sent then uh, to Camp Butner, North Carolina, where I took my uh, medical training. And uh, then we left there and went overseas to England. And we took more training in England. And uh, yeah. You were how old when you, at this point? I was 19 years old at that time. And uh, we, uh, we went from there on to uh, Omaha Beachhead. And from Omaha, we went up through St. Lowell. And we went through uh, southern uh, southern France. That would be southern France. We. Uh, you were with the Third Army. I was with the Third Army. And yes. the regiment and the yes, that you were with. The uh, the uh, regiment. Well, the the Army, Third Army. It was. Uh, In the medical corps. Medical corps, yeah. And I was with the 92nd medical battalion right and we were supposed to uh, uh, treat for gas uh, phosgene chloropicin and all that kind of stuff if the germans had used gas instead of that they uh, they did use gas which i think uh, a good lord they didn't they killed a lot of people and uh, we uh, we left uh, there and went to Bastogne. I was in the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, when we got, the war was almost over. They, were, they captured, they captured some medical troops of the uh, U.S. Uh, I just say U.S. medics. I don't know who they were, but they uh, captured them. The Germans did. And they left, uh, uh, I don't know, they, they, uh, they generally, when they captured anybody like that, well, they'd, uh, they'd shoot them. And that would get them out of their hair, you see. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, we went through the Battle of the Bulge. And after the Battle of the Bulge, we left uh, Bastogne. And we went directly into Ducal, Duckhow concentration camp. Did you have any, you had a special insignia that you wore as a member of the medical uh, team, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, which is at a medical, uh, U.S. medical over there. The, uh, uh, oh, <laughs> the special medical uh, insignia that you wore to designate who, what group you were what with. What group I was in, yes ma'am. Did, had you heard anything about a place like, that you knew what you were getting into as far as concentration camps? Had you heard rumors along the way or anything? No ma'am, never heard any rumors whatever uh, about, uh, about Ducal concentration, none of the con concentration camps. Uh, but uh, I do know that uh, the concentration camps were uh, were something else. Uh, I was to I was told that now. <clears throat> but uh, uh, in Ducal, 
Doc Al, I guess. Uh, why uh, you? Uh, it really opened your eyes, and I didn't realize that one human being, regardless of its color or creed, could do another person as they done the Jews and uh, the people that they didn't want nothing to do with. The Germans did. So. Uh, do you remember the date when you when you got to Dachau? Uh, somewhere around the 16th or 18th of April, 1945. 1945. And we went in uh, Dukal concentration camp early in the morning. It was before daylight. And when they uh, opened, uh, when we, daylight came, while we uh, we looked around, and there was dead people laying all around, all around this fence, all around the fence, dead people. And there was a pile of bodies right close to the uh, close close to the incinerator where they burn them. And uh, they had this shower. The shower was set up uh, as a gas chamber. And it was all kinds of lice and filth of all kinds. And we had uh, over here, we had a real a railroad uh, cattle cars in here that run off is sidetracked. And uh, it was full, it was full of dead bodies. Uh, this whole car was full of dead bodies. Well, nothing but, uh, uh, they were skin and bones, that's my, in my language. And uh, we, they built it to us, there was a platoon of us. Which would be how many, approximately? Well, approximates. Several. Well, I was out of the uh, uh, platoon, uh, A platoon, Company A, and also Company uh, A platoon. And uh, when uh, we was billeted in this concrete, or not a concrete, but it's a uh, brick building right there that housed, housed us. And we stayed in there 93 days. 93 days. And these huts that uh, have draw there, you can see they uh, were used for uh, people uh, they were used for people to, well, to sleep in. And uh, they had straw beds. They had straw beds in there and boards nailed to the wall all in, uh, all, all in these build, buildings here. And they were uh, uh, boards, and they put straw in there for the people to sleep on. And as soon as one person died, why well, they'd... This gentleman here, that he was more or less the undertaker, I suppose. Uh, he would haul, put them on a cart and haul them out the gate. Now, after they got through the gate, I don't know where he went, where they went to. I guess they took them out there and buried them. That's just a. Uh, or there were piles of bodies. A pile, piles of bodies. Yeah. Is that what you saw, or you? Yeah. And this is a. Uh, this pile of bodies here that. Uh, I say with two semi semi trailers, couldn't haul them <clears throat> all in one uh, all in one load. They would be uh, they would be uh, 200 300 in that pile. They couldn't as fast as they died, and they uh, they couldn't get rid of them uh, fast enough. And they they would. Uh, uh, to ship them out uh, this gate on this on these carts on on this cart, 
and uh, then they would burn what they could to get rid of them. And uh, the, uh, the stink was beyond anything I ever smelt in my life. And I'm a no, I'm a no farm boy. I was kind of raised on a farm, and I've smelt a lot of stuff. I smelt dead cattle and stuff like that. But this, a human being, has a smell with all all of its own. It it can't be uh, can't be say, well, that's a smell like a dead cow, and not so. Because each uh, <clears throat> the uh, they got a, a smell of it just, uh, it's something terrible that you, uh, and you walk in there, we, we went in, and when we went in, we was given a, a mask to go on, to go on our face. I had just a little old cup like, and one on your face. And uh, they were, uh, there was a, uh, all like, like all kinds of disease there. There was tuberculosis. There was uh, dysentery, dysentery probably, dysentery or oh God, yeah, that that was well, that's ever come from them folks not eating. See, right. there was uh, uh, there was you know they had. You said here there's no water to be found. No, no water. No, no, there's no water in here to be found. No. So they were just literally without yeah. food or water or anything now, at all. Now, uh, when uh, when uh, we uh, when we got really organized, well, we would uh, we would send take these people up, you know, in a line, and we had a table there for they we'd give them shots of uh, uh, typhus and so forth, them that we figured so, how to change. Right. But their little arms and hips and so forth were so small. Uh, I mean, by being small, that they were uh, skin and bones from, from starvation. And, and yeah, and it was pretty hard to find a place to give them people shots. And so we uh, we done the best we could. And I have been asked the question. Why, why did you, why didn't you do more than you done? Well, when you are a uh, private first class, PFC, well, you do what you are told and not anymore. Right. And if you do uh, too much, well, they'll, uh, they'll say, well, uh, uh, they'll, they'll give you a good skull scolding, you know, and that was why that uh, they told us when we went in there not to give these folks anything to eat. Now that is a hard thing to do. Right. You see people starving, and uh, they're on their way out. You know, you know that uh, that just they'll be walking along and just fall over dead. So many, many so, more died after you got there oh, because of Oh, yeah, of Lord, their yeah, plenty of them, yeah. And uh, uh, they were, well, they, they were laying all over the place. Uh, you couldn't, behind the building, beside the building, beside the fence, all over. They thousands, had, thousands? Yeah, with thousands of them, yeah. And uh, then when... Uh, when we got organized to where we could, well, we went outside of the camp and dug holes, long, long holes, uh, with a bulldozer. The English did that. And uh, they buried uh, thousands and thousands of our troops, our, uh, the Jews and whatnot, the people there. And I have been asked this before. Uh, how could you tell that they were uh, English? Well, if you couldn't tell that they, they were English unless they spoke in English and told you where they were from and how. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, that's. Did any of them talk to you? Did you did you talk to anyone to, to know what what had happened before you got there, or were you not able uh, to? No, ma'am. I uh, most I couldn't understand uh, French, and I couldn't understand Jewish yeah, or German, and or German. And uh, I had a few choice words for the German, but it didn't it didn't work out that way. <clears throat> but, did you uh, see any German troops? There were none left. By the time you got there, there were no German, I mean, oh, oh, yeah. German soldiers. Yeah, the Germans, the SS troopers, uh, cleaned up the dead folks in here. A as and, your prisoners? Uh, yeah. That's the SS troopers were prisoners. That's after. After you got yeah, there? Uh, after we got there and liberated them. And they, were, they would come in and they'd drag, uh, they'd drag these people and uh, pick them up and carry them and whatnot, the SS troopers had to do that. And they didn't look so uh, so high and mighty then, you know, because uh, they, they lost their prestige, I guess you'd call it. Wasn't it hard to keep American soldiers from just killing them, you know, just... Well, yes. They it, were it, so uh, angry. Yeah. Uh, angry has everything to do with it, you know. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get angry at even my worst enemy. But uh, uh, several times that uh, that I could uh, maybe done done something that I've been sorry of now. Right. Were there men, women, and children that you could tell, or was there's a uh, there was a uh, there was children in this camp, men and children in this camp. And to see a child that's starving like that, why, uh, it, it's, it's something else that gets to me. I, uh, uh, you actually spent 93 days within... 93 that. days within that camp, yes ma'am. Yeah. We spent 93 days there. And I hit, uh, I can sit here now, I'm shaking all over. Shaking all over and talking about it 50 years later. But it, it'll never, it never goes away, you know. You, uh, I, I dream of it. And uh, I also have back, back they're what they call backlash, backlash. backlashes. backlashes. And uh, I can be going down the road and uh, or driving down the road, a highway, or anywhere, and if I smell uh, burnt meat or anything in that, that you you know you'll burn meat or something like that, you if you cook, and uh, then it, all this other stuff just flashes right up before my eyes. It looks so real that for a second, you think you're there, see, right. and uh, it, it's hard to get out of your mind. And uh, I don't think that anybody uh, will ever, that had that kind of experience, will ever uh, get, it out, get that out of their mind. I go to the uh, uh, psychiatrist now, and uh, once a week, or once a week, or uh, well, every week, once a week. At the VA? At the VA. Because of that experience? That because point. of that experience. And uh, I guess I'll just keep it going, but it, it, don't, it don't really seem like it helps any much. It had to leave a terrible um, impression on a very young man, American person, who had never witnessed anything even close to that kind of... Well, the most, most I ever saw when I was a kid is a dead cow or a dead horse or something like that, you know. But I never uh, never realized that uh, human beings could be that uh, rough on anyone. Or, that or cruel. Could, that cruel. And being there, you still probably couldn't understand how it could happen. No, huh? Uh, Did you talk 
at all with the other young men that were with you? You probably were all just sort of shocked. Or? Well, we, uh, uh, when I, when, when we went in there, well, they, we was all given a job to do, and I never, I never talked to anyone, uh, except maybe the sergeant come down. We had a, a sergeant out of, uh, Virginia that, uh, he, he was uh, Sergeant Williams, Maurice Williams, out of out of state of Virginia, and he went right, he went crazy right on the block, right on the right in the camp, and they had to send him back. Uh, and I don't know where they sent him to. But you he, saw the Evans. You saw everything that was. Yes, ma'am. We uh, I saw more than I wanted to. And uh, I uh, I get choked up about it now, you know. It's hard to hard to talk. Right, I understand that. And we 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 do this as difficult as it is because we want for history. We want we don't want it to happen again, and we want we want people like you that were American soldiers from this country who saw what had happened. We need their testimony, and we we are deeply indebted to uh, men like you that went through what they went through um, and and finally brought uh, liberation to these places because it would have gone on and on. So we, we are indebted to you. Is, is there anything else you would want to uh, say? I, I, missed, I missed one thing, that uh, these uh, bodies that outside of the crematorium, they, uh, well, I didn't put it on here, I guess. Oh, yeah, a furnace right there. <clears throat> and uh, they would, uh, they had a a thing running, running around here, a uh, rack-like, that held these hanging, held bodies on them. And they would put them on there, and then this chain would, uh, there would be a guy there that would run them into the, the furnace on that chain. On, on, the, on the hooks. And when we got there, uh, I'm skipping all over the place, but that's, that's all right. the best I can remember. Uh, when we got there, why, uh, there were uh, still three bodies hanging on these hooks on the, close to the furnace. And uh, like I say, I don't know why that uh, one human being can be that cruel to another. I don't care what color they are, what uh, race they are, whatever. But the Jews, I think, took the worst beating of all uh, as, as by that I mean that uh, they, <coughs> they was, uh, I think, six million of them killed. Six million Jews killed in this uh, 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 Holocaust. It's hard for other people but to, to see it in there, but you see it, in, you know, every day because you lived through seeing seeing the results of what had happened during that period of yes, time. Yes, ma'am, I sure did, yeah. And we see this, uh, we, see, we see it every night, almost every night in their dreams. And we uh, wake up ringing wet with sweat, uh, jump out of bed, sit on the side of the bed, get up and walk to get, you know, to uh, everything. Well. When, when me and I, I like to add this, when me and my wife got married, I come, uh, I come home on December 13th, 1945, and I used to get up, I have these dreams, and I'd get up and go, walk, just go in, uh, walk, uh, you know, wherever, uh, just for a walk. Uh, and and I'd come back and uh, relax a while, and maybe have a cup of coffee, cold coffee, for, for instance, and uh, then I would, uh, Go back to bed and go back to sleep. 
And uh, that's about the extent of our life, I guess. Well, um, uh, we, we, we honor you as a liberator, and, and we wish we could take away the pain, and unfortunately we probably can't, but just know that what you're doing now so that other people will know what happened is extremely important. And we well, thank you for, for doing it in spite of the fact that, it, that it's very, very difficult for you to do it. I hope, uh, I hope somebody or all the people benefits by what I have said here today. Thank you.